Hello everyone. In this lesson, I will cover the method of ordinary least squares. By the end of this lesson, you will understand how to use the method of ordinary least squares to estimate regression coefficients. The method of ordinary least squares is attributed to Carl Frederick Gauss. He happens to be a German mathematician. If you recall the population regression function, yi equals beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui, we want to estimate this population regression function from the sample regression function. And in which case, beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat xi is yi hat. So if we go ahead and substitute this yi hat, we end up getting the population y equals estimated y plus the residual term. The residual term or the error term is simply the difference between the actual y and the estimated y. So we just simply go ahead and make the residual term the subject. So our aim is to determine the sample regression function so that it is very close to the actual population y. So we adopt the sum of residuals criterion. This means that we have to make the residuals as small as possible. So we just go ahead and apply the summation notation, which is the sigma for the residual term. This is what we call the sum of residuals criterion. Now we would like to remove the upper and the lower limit of the sigma notation in order to make this equation very simple. Now there is a statistical property that we need to observe. The sum of residuals is zero. So if we adopt the sum of residuals criterion, we end up getting the result to be zero, which cannot be used for any further analysis. So we go ahead and adopt the least squares criterion which is also referred to as the sum of squared residuals. The sum of squared residuals is simply the sum of squared differences between the population y and the estimated y. So if we go ahead and substitute the estimated y and open up the parenthesis, we end up getting the sum of squared residuals equals sigma the population y minus beta 1 hat minus beta 2 hat xi squared. We now need to minimize the sum of squared residuals with respect to these estimates. So the sum of squared errors is simply a function of the estimated parameters. And this is the point where we apply differential calculus in order to estimate these parameters. So we will go ahead and differentiate our sum of squared residuals with respect to the beta 1 hat and the beta 2 hat, which we normally refer to as the first order condition. So at this point, we will have to differentiate the sum of squared residuals with respect to the estimated parameters. So here, we just go ahead and differentiate with respect to beta 1 hat first. So it is partial derivative of the sum of squared residuals with respect to the beta 1 hat. And so if you go ahead and differentiate this, you will end up getting 2 so you have to differentiate the whole function as one. So two multiplied by the sum of yi minus beta one hat minus beta two hat xi. And then we just go ahead and subtract one from the power of two after the differentiation. But because this one is raised to the power of 2, we apply the chain rule. So after differentiating the whole function as 1, we go ahead and multiply this by the derivative of what is inside the parenthesis, so which is the beta 1. So if you differentiate the beta 1 inside the parenthesis alone, you end up getting minus 1. Now, first other condition in calculus, we have to equate this to 0. So what is going to happen is we can now multiply this 2 and this minus 1. So we end up getting minus 2 multiplying sigma yi minus beta 1 hat minus beta 2 hat xi now raised to the power 1. So we just go ahead and leave it like that. So we set this equal to 0. Now at this point, we will go ahead and divide both sides by minus 2. So let me try as much as possible to 
make this very practical. So here you divide the left hand side by minus two and the right hand side by minus two. And the aim is to get rid of this minus two and this minus two right here. So we just go ahead and get the answer to be sigma y i minus beta one hat minus beta two hat x i and zero divided by minus two is just simply zero. Now at this point, I would like to multiply through by the sigma, or let me just say apply the sigma notation or distribute the sigma notation throughout the entire terms in the bracket. So I will just go ahead and say sigma y i minus. Now it is very important that this beta one hat is a constant. When you estimate it, you get a single value. So this is not a variable. And it is very hard for you to see something like sigma two. We normally don't write that. So if you want to sum a constant some number of times, like for example, let's say you want to sum um, two, three times, so two plus two plus two, which is just simply six. If you want to sum it five times, two plus two plus two plus two plus two, which would also give you 10. You can see that you just have to take the value which you want to sum, the constant value I mean. So two, and then you go ahead and simply multiply by the number of times you want to add. So for the first case, we have three. So three here, and we end up getting the same six. And here too, we added two five times. So we just simply take the constant value two and we multiply by the number of times we added together five, and then we end up getting the same 10. So if you are summing a constant value as many times, it is just simply that constant value multiplied by the number of times you have to add these constant terms, okay? So in that case, if I come back here, then the summation of the beta one hat, where the beta one hat is constant, is now going to be the beta one hat multiplied by the number of times you want to add the beta one. And then here we have minus. Now again, we also have beta two hat xi. So this statistical property is also very important to observe. If you have the sum of say two and then multiply by a certain variable, you just simply take the constant term out. So it becomes two and then you apply the sigma notation to the variable itself. So in which case, this is gonna be beta two hat the sum of x i and this equals zero. And in which case I will name this as my first equation. Now we go ahead and differentiate the sum of squared residuals with respect to beta two hat. So we also go ahead and differentiate the whole thing as one. Remember this is a chain rule. So two would multiply the sum of y i minus beta one hat minus beta two hat x i. And then we subtract one from the two and then we multiply by differentiating what is inside the parenthesis. So we are differentiating with respect to beta two. So differentiating this beta two, we end up getting minus x i. And then we set this equal to zero, first other condition, remember. So this minus xi, the minus part, I can multiply this by the constant two here. So I'm going to get minus two multiplying yi minus beta one hat minus beta two at xi. And that is raised to the power one. So that is just it. And then multiplied by xi right here, which is equal to zero. So we also go ahead and divide both sides by minus two, just like we did on the left-hand side. So when we do that, we just eliminate the minus two there. So we have the sum of yi minus beta one hat minus beta two hat xi multiplied by xi, and that is equal to zero. Now, first of all, let's multiply xi with every term in the parenthesis. So we are gonna have the sum of, so yi times xi will be xi yi minus 
Now, beta 1 hat times xi will be beta 1 hat xi minus, now beta 2 xi times xi would be beta 2 xi squared. And then we set this equal to zero. So now we distribute the sigma notation with every term in the parenthesis. So we have sigma x i y i minus beta 1 hat sigma x i minus beta 2 hat sigma x i squared. And then we set this equal to zero. Then I will go ahead and name this as my second equation. So from the first equation, so let's write here from, from equation one, we are interested in finding the beta one hat because in the equation one, we got it from differentiating the sum of squared residuals with respect to beta one hat. So we need to find beta one hat from here. So what we are gonna do is to send the minus n beta one hat, we transpose it to the right hand side. So we are gonna have sigma y i minus beta two hat sigma x i, which will be which would be on the left hand side. And then we send the minus n beta one, which in this case becomes positive n beta one hat. Now at this point, we go ahead and divide the right hand side by n and every term on the left also by n. So when we do that, then you will observe this here. If you recall, if you want to find the mean of y values, it is just simply the sum of y values divided by n, which is a sample size. And again, if you want to find the mean of x, it is the sum of x values divided by the number of values or the sample size. So in that case, we end up getting sigma yi over n becomes the mean y minus we have beta 2 hat and then sigma xi over n also becomes the mean of x and that would be equal to beta 1 hat. So this means if you want to estimate beta 1 hat in an econometric model, it is just simply, so let me just go ahead and rewrite it like this. So it would be beta one hat equals the mean of y minus beta two hat mean of x. So this is how we can solve for beta one hat using the method of ordinary least squares. Now we also need to go ahead and determine the beta two hat because remember you need to have the beta two hat in order to estimate the beta one hat. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we are gonna do right now is we will go ahead and substitute this beta one into the equation two in order to solve for this problem. So I will just go ahead and write it here. So it's gonna be sigma x i y i minus now, beta 1 is the mean of y minus beta 2 hat mean of x. And then this is multiplied by the sum of xi minus beta 2 hat sigma xi squared, and this is equal to 0. So now what we are going to do is we just simply multiply through by this sigma xi. So we will have sigma xi yi, and then we have minus y bar times sigma xi. So we will get minus y bar multiplying sigma xi 
And then we also have a minus sign here. We also have a minus outside the parenthesis. So minus and minus will become positive. So we have plus beta 2 hat x bar multiplying sigma xi. And then we have the rest of the term. So beta 2 hat. And then we have sigma xi squared. And this will be equal to 0. Now you can see that we have terms like the mean of y, the mean of x. We also have sigma xi, sigma xi. So we have to find a way of making them compatible or homogeneous. So what we have to do is to define something. Now look at it. We observed that the mean of y is the sum of y values divided by the number of y values. So what we can do in this case is we just want to make the sum of y values the subject. So in that case, we just multiply. So n by the y bar. So this is going to be n y bar will be the same as the sum of the y values. We can do the same thing for the mean of x, which is the sum of the xi values divided by the number of x values. And we just simply make the sigma xi the subject. So we just multiply n by the x bar. So we have n x bar equals the sum of xi. Now we can go ahead and substitute this identity into our equation. So we are going to have sigma x i y i minus y bar sigma x i okay sorry so this sigma x i is now is now n x bar from here okay and then we have plus beta 2 hat beta 2 hat x bar and then sigma xi is also n x bar as well and then minus beta 2 hat sigma xi squared equal to zero now you will observe that the square term is affecting only the xi not the whole sigma xi so um, here you cannot replace the n x bar so you leave it like this and then let's just simply multiply the, or let's expand the bracket. Let's open the brackets. So sigma x i y i minus now this is going to be n x bar. Oops. So n x bar y bar. So we multiply these terms. And then here we are going to have plus. Let's have n first. So, uh, okay, let's have beta 2. Okay, so beta 2 hat and then n x bar squared like this. And then this term is going to be minus beta 2 hat and then sigma x i squared. And that is equal to zero. So at this point, we want to find beta 2 hat. You can see that we no longer have beta 1 in there like we had originally so we now have beta two terms so we need to find this so we simply group like terms so we transpose these two terms to the right hand side so in which case we are going to get sigma x i y i minus n x bar y bar and this is going to be equal to then we send these two terms so this is minus here it's going to be positive beta two hat sigma x i squared and then minus beta 2 hat n x bar squared then at this point we are going to have sigma x i y i minus n x bar y bar equals then we go ahead and factorize the beta 2 at out so beta 2 at we factorize it out and we are left with sigma x i squared minus n x bar squared 
So if we want to find only beta 2, then we have to divide both sides by the coefficient of beta 2, okay? So in that case, we have sigma x i y i minus n x bar y bar would be equal to beta 2 hat sigma x i squared minus n x bar squared. Now let me just go back and confirm. Exactly. So all I am interested in doing right now is just simply making beta 2 the subject. So I will divide the right-hand side by the terms in the parenthesis. And the left-hand side, I do the same thing. So I end up getting rid of this term on the right-hand side. So we get sigma x i y i minus n x bar y bar divided by sigma x i squared minus n x bar squared and that equals beta 2 hat. Now this is the answer. So if you also want to estimate beta 2 hat, you can also use this formula to estimate it. Um, but normally the beta 2 hat is usually presented in a certain form. And so it requires some skills and something that you would have to assume, okay? Um, this is how you have to approach the problem. So what I'm going to do right now is, let me use the, the black color. So let's look at this term. Um, sigma x i minus x bar, and then we have y i minus y bar. So what we essentially have to do is we are saying that the numerator term for the beta 2 hat is going to be the same as this, but we need to prove that it is indeed equal to this one. So we have to go ahead and let's expand this. So we are going to have this sigma. Now we need to multiply these two terms in the bracket. So this xi multiplies the second bracket. So we are going to have x i y i and then the xi multiply negative y bar. So we're going to get minus y bar x i. And then now we take the second term in the first bracket minus x bar multiplied by the second bracket. So we have minus x bar times y i will be minus x bar y i and then this minus x bar times minus y bar would be positive x bar y bar now we go ahead and distribute the sigma notation throughout so we have sigma x i y i and then minus y bar because y bar is a constant so sigma x i and then here we have minus x bar, sigma y i, and then plus x bar, y bar are all constant terms. So this sigma will now become n, x bar, y bar. And then we go ahead and substitute, if you recall previously, we denoted that sigma x i is simply n x bar and sigma y i is n y bar. So here we should have So let me just push this to the left-hand side so we get more space, just in case we don't run into trouble. So here we have equal sign, and then we have sigma x i y i, and then we have minus y bar, and sigma x i is n x bar, then minus x bar, sigma y i is also n y bar, then plus n x bar y bar so let's open the brackets sometimes i do tend to use brackets and parentheses um, interchangeably so don't worry about that okay 
So y bar times nx bar is going to be nx bar y bar. And here also we have nx bar y bar and plus nx bar y bar. So you can see that we have minus nx bar y bar and positive nx bar y bar. So they cancel out. And here we end up getting sigma x i y i minus n x bar y bar, which is exactly the same terms in the numerator of the beta 2 hat, you can see. So we have proven that the numerator term is just simply the sum of the deviation of x and the deviation of y. So let's do that for the denominator as well. So here, the sum of x i minus x bar squared will also give you the denominator. So like I said, at this point, you would have to be very smart about it and kind of remember that these are the terms that equals what you have here if you want to prove this formula. So I'm going to expand this. So I will have the sum of now xi squared. So we will have xi squared. And then we multiply xi by minus x bar times 2. And we will get minus 2x bar xi. And then minus x bar squared is going to be positive x bar squared. So in which case, we just distribute the sigma notation through. So we have sigma xi squared minus the constant terms out, sigma xi, then plus x bar squared is constant. So we have n x bar squared. Then we have sigma x i squared minus 2 x bar. Now, sigma x i is also the same as x n x bar, then plus n x bar squared. So we will have sigma x i squared minus. Now we multiply these terms, we're going to get 2 n x bar squared plus n x bar squared. So you can see that the second and third terms are the same with different coefficients. So we go ahead and perform the algebra. So we have sigma x i squared. So it's going to be minus 1. So n x bar squared. And that is going to be the answer. So is that the same as the denominator of the beta 2 hat? If they are the same, then the beta 2 hat. So let me say this implies that the beta 2 hat equals sigma x i minus x bar multiplying y i minus y bar all divided by sigma x i minus x bar squared. And then at this point, that is going to be the answer, but we go ahead and define some terms. So we just want to reduce the form of the formula. So here we assume that, so we'd say, let the lowercase x i be equal to the deviation of capital X from the mean, and then the lowercase letter y also be the deviation of y from its mean. Then we can now simplify our formula for beta 2 hat to be sigma small x i small y i all divided by sigma small x i squared and that is going to be the formula so this is how we apply the method of ordinary least squares so in the end our formula to estimate our beta 2 hat 
is sigma small xi small yi divided by sigma small xi squared where the small xi is capital xi from the mean and the small yi is uppercase y from its mean and then the beta one is the mean of y minus the beta two hat multiplied by the mean of x. And this is how you can estimate the parameters. So we know that the beta one, let's use a different ink. So we know that the beta one is the intercept. And this one, okay, space, right? Okay, let's do this. So this one is the slope coefficient. Okay, this is going to be the slope coefficient and this is gonna be the intercept. So this is how you apply the method of ordinary least squares. So in the next lesson, we will learn about the properties of the parameters which we have estimated using the method of ordinary least squares.